Good morning, good morning, Congregation of the Mighty. I am so glad to be with you again this morning. We are going to get it into it for this Sunday school class. All right, so we are still talking about the biotics of the Dunamite, and that is exerting God's power, exercising his dunamis, and how that actually comes about how we are to build up our spirits, transform our souls and our minds and our wills into the expression, the physical expression of Jesus Christ, excuse me, in our bodies. So, all right, let's get into it. So again, we discussed about becoming God's dudamites. This is assuming our role, taking our place, taking the reins, taking control, um, and exercising our elect offspring authority. Again, last time we talked through biotic and what that means and all of the different uh, spheres and spheres of expression that biotic should be encompass in our lives and in our surroundings. So if you want to go ahead and do that review, you can go ahead and uh, just review uh, last week's. So, and again, I wanted to reiterate the building, the building blocks, the building, the organic biotic you brick by brick. And she had listed these out. So these are Remember, we talked about yesterday about our, our last week about DNA. So these are our soul DNA building blocks. And again, like I said, these are the things that we should be focusing on. These are the things um, that should be the building blocks, uh, the, the DNA makeup of our souls, of our scripturally organic, culturally unmodified souls, of our uh, dunamite, bionic souls purpose, force, love, faith, prayer, peace, wisdom, grit, hope, trust, grace, passion, boldness, holiness, service, fidelity, conviction, bravery, loyalty, resolve, and determination. And that was just to name a few. So again, just like remember when we talked about notice self-doubt is not in there. Uh, notice fear, intimidation, uh, sabotage, self-sabotage, bitterness, envy, jealousy, uh, anger, rage, all of that is not in there. All of that should not be incorporated into our soul's DNA, but yet it is, but yet there's those triggers. And we're going to talk about those soul triggers. There's those things in the makeup of our souls, and we know it's the soul because the body just simply responds to the will, emotions, and, and the actions of the soul. Uh, and that is why even in scripture, you know, it talks about the converting of the soul, the transforming of your mind. All of that is the responsibility of the soul. The body simply, even though it, it impacts and it sends signals to the soul, it is the soul's responsibility that is the deciding factor. It is your will. It is your mind. It is your thoughts. It is your heart. It is your soul. That is the decision maker between the two, between following the spirit that God has imparted into you and that spirit that is connected and engrafted with the Holy Spirit through the blood of Jesus Christ, or is it to the nature of the flesh? Again, lust of the eyes, pride of life, all of that, that entangles uh, us into the trenches of this world. So, but it's the soul that is that deciding, determining factor. And we're going to talk about the DNA that composes your soul and why it's so important that this, the, the DNA of the soul is rewritten and not just rewritten, um, but it is transformed. It is made anew. It is made anew, made alive uh, to the nature of Jesus Christ and why there is that switch out. Again, talking about the conversion of the soul, meeting 
those pieces of soul D DNA that are taken out and replaced with your God DNA that gets imparted and downloaded into your spirit, that from your spirit gets expressed into your soul, that replaces the, the flush's DNA, even the, the DNA of mom and dad. Because as I'm sure you guys already know, you guys are, are awesome, amazing people, smart people, congregation of the mighty. And I know we've talked about in times past how your genetic makeup is comprised of half of the chromosomes, half of your chromosomes come from your mom's DNA and half of your chromosome, the other half of your chromosomes comes from your dad DNA. And the combinations thereof uh, depend on a, a couple different factors, but it's a combination of those two sets of chromosomes, uh, those two copies of DNA that make up who you are. So even in that, confronting what is even written on your soul from your parents, what's written and impressed upon your soul um, from your mom's side, as well as from your dad's side, and what that means. You know, a, a lot of times we like to think, um, you know, those kind of things just stay in the physical realm, but we know through epigenetics, remember we talked about last time, epigenetics, it is all of those outside forces that have an effect on our DNA. I remember we discussed earlier uh, of several of uh, several even of the the example with uh, with the two plants and how those words those different sets of words were that where it was praise or whether it was uh, bullying or tearing down how it literally affected the DNA it affected the expression the DNA expression what we call phenotype. Uh, phenotype, the genetic expression, the physical expression of those genes onto those plants, how that one that was being bullied and tore down was dis disintegrating, was dying. And the other one was thriving, even though, all, you know, the sunlight and oxygen and soil and everything was the same for both. So that is a form of, of epigenetics, how outside forces affect our genes and how that writing of those genes does get expressed physically, uh, mentally, emotionally. Uh, we know, uh, you know, it's proven scientifically now of, of women, um, you know, depending on their outside circumstances, uh, depending on what they're going through, say they have a high stress job or they just have a high stress environment or just they're going through uh, some different physical and emotional things that are just making them really stressed. Well, we have these case in points where we have documented um, with those particular pregnancies that they have uh, a really high increase in cortisol. Um, so the baby's healthy, the baby's fine, the baby's totally fine. But because of those increases in cortisol from mom, that affects the child. And how does that get expressed in the child? These are children that are that are documented documented known to be startled easily, uh, known to have uh, difficulty focusing, uh, known uh, to have uh, uh, sometimes uh, mental deficiencies. It plays out. It starts to play like it transforms, just like how mom is feeling, starts to transform literally not just her own DNA, but because it's affecting her DNA, it's affecting the baby's DNA. It breaks that blood brain barrier that it goes into the baby. It goes through the placenta into the baby. It somehow feeds into that child. All the mechanisms thereof, well, we're going to start to look into that, but that feeds into that child. And so that child actually has those difficult inherited, inherited difficulties, you know, about a circumstance that didn't really technically even involve them and involve their mom. But somehow they are having the aftermath, they're having the effects and the side effects uh, of what happened to mom. And like I said, and there you can look at all the research on your own time of, of how these children are affected by not just by not something that happened to them, 
but something that happened to mom that and through the genes through epigenetics we know has has affects mom and that how that affects baby and there there's tons of research too of how uh different studies you know through different mice through my studies that have been documented so it has an effect it's a proven effect it's a proven side effect of what we know is happening so but and that's why the transforming of our minds, the converting of our souls and what that all entails. And that's why it should comprise, it should be converted out in those, uh, the building blocks, the DNA of our soul for the deutamite life should be switched out to these so that it can plainly be seen of what that should be comprising of. Amen. So, yes. All right. So let's get this party started. Okay. So let's go on further. And I know, remember, we talked about it all starts with words and how words, like again, we have documented scientific fact as well as we know it says in scripture that it all starts with words and it's not just the words again how a man thinks in his heart so is he and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so we know it's not just simply words what comes out of our mouth but our thoughts and our psyche because remember even based off of these two scriptures what is coming out of our mouths is the indication of an overflow an abundance in our hearts and what our thoughts, what, what are our meditations? Those are indications of what are our meditations. So in two, we talked about, so everything begins with a word. And this is a, a clear example of our very DNA. Our physical DNA is composed of words. Again, we're going to go through the bases. So the A, T, uh, to TA, the CG, to GC. What does that mean? Those are base pairings. Um, and those are how DNA always matches up. And that represents the, the thiamine, adenine, uh, cytosine, guanine. Those are words. And those are nucleotide bases. Those are nuclear bases that are comprised of those words. Notice we didn't number them. We gave them words. We gave them language. And that literally is what composes our DNA. But we're going to look even further because we know, like I said, the body is just a type and shadow of the soul, of the spirit. So here we can see, again, we know that DNA is a protected double helix. Um, but what causes, what causes uh, that DNA to open up? What causes it to open up and to replicate what causes and what causes your soul? What causes your soul to open up and replicate that DNA so that it keeps recurring? That's where we left off last time. And so here we go. All right. So again, we see the, the double helix DNA. Again, that's how it is generally protected. Um, so what are the soul? What are the things that happen in our soul that cause it to open up and to replicate what is needed? What causes our soul to replicate uh, and open up to replicate what is needed in our lives? Let's first look at this, uh, just go through this video as it kind of describes how it happens physically in our DNA. And from that, we're going to go through and we're going to take it and how it represents what too is happening in our soul. So let's go ahead and take a look. DNA is a molecule made up of two strands, twisted around each other in a double helix shape. Each strand is made up of a sequence of four chemical bases, represented by the letters A, C, G and T. The two strands are complementary. This means that wherever there's a T in one strand, there will be an A in the opposite strand, and wherever there's a C, there will be a G in the other strand. 
Each strand has a five prime end and a three prime end. The two strands run in opposite directions. This determines how each strand of DNA is replicated. The first step in DNA replication is to separate the two strands. This unzipping is done by an enzyme called helicase and results in the formation of a replication fork. The separated strands each provide a template for creating a new strand of DNA. An enzyme called primase starts the process. This enzyme makes a small piece of RNA called a primer. This marks the starting point for the construction of the new strand of DNA. An enzyme called DNA polymerase binds to the primer and will make the new strand of DNA. DNA polymerase can only add DNA bases in one direction, from the 5' prime end to the 3' prime end. One of the new strands of DNA, the leading strand, is made continuously the DNA polymerase adding bases one by one in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The other strand, the lagging strand, cannot be made in this continuous way because it runs in the opposite direction. The DNA polymerase can therefore only make this strand in a series of small chunks called Okazaki fragments. Each fragment is started with an RNA primer. DNA polymerase then adds a short row of DNA bases in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The next primer is then added further down the lagging strand. Another Okazaki fragment is then made and the process is repeated again. Once the new DNA has been made, the enzyme exonuclease removes all the RNA primers from both strands of DNA. Another DNA polymerase enzyme then fills in the gaps that are left behind with DNA. Finally, the enzyme DNA ligase seals up the fragments of DNA in both strands to form a continuous double strand. DNA replication is described as semi-conservative because each DNA molecule is made up of one old, conserved strand of DNA and one new one. Alright, so isn't that interesting? There's a lot of interesting pieces that we'll, we're going to go through on that part. So. One of the things that it talked about is there are certain pieces of DNA that the, you know, th these big enzymes called ribosomes, they'll come in and they'll, you know, trigger to this DNA, hey, I need you to unravel because I need to make a copy. And then this other one comes in and it'll start the primer. And that primer is an indication, hey, I'm going to copy this part of this part of the DNA strand. And then, like I said, through all that, that then that DNA strand gets copied. Um, and that copy is based off of the bases, the makeup of that strand. Um, and then the other side of the DNA, it gets copied that very same way. Um, a little differently because the direction is really important and that direction is defined by numbers. And the bases are what, those bases are what determine what actually gets copied. So think about that in terms of your soul. So what are the primers of your soul? What are the things in your soul that cause you to replicate what is in your soul? So think about that. That could be things like what we classify as triggers. That could be words. That could be a thought pattern. That could be different meditations. Uh, that can be uh, different situations where your psychological self registers it that it is something that's happening again. And so what it goes into the soul and that primer activates that replication based on what is already pre-written in your soul. 
this is why I remember, you know, it talked about, you know, that it was conservative, that our DNA replicates in a conservative conservative matter, meaning it's made up of one old, one side is old and the one side is new because it's a copy of what pre-existed. This is why the change out has to happen. This is why the DNA of our soul has to be rewritten. Because every time those situations, every time those thoughts, every time those different things occur, your soul is automatically going to write off or copy off of what is already there. This is why, too, we can change habits. We can make new habits and it may be consistent for a while, um, but a, that situation will return or a situation like it, uh, maybe at, uh, at higher stakes or maybe, you know, maybe different situations, but it's kind of the same scenario to where you, your psyche, your heart, your emotion, your will, your soul will go back to that original code because that primer has been activated and it'll go back to that original code. And if that strand of soul DNA has not been changed out, then it will, despite all the work of your habits again. So like, so your habits can be like your phenotype, the physical outward expression of your soul. But see if that code in particular, hasn't been rewritten, hasn't been changed out to those building blocks of the dudamite, you'll go back to writing that same code. And what does that look like? That looks like in situations of, say, high stress, say, uh, uh, death in the family, say, you know, circumstances that seemingly happen outside of our control, uh, situations that we're just not prepared for, uh, demands that we're not prepared for, things that uh, come out of the blue, say, uh, or even, like I said, unexpected things that happen to us, good or bad. Our soul will go back to that original DNA, that original soul DNA, and copy that out. Uh, to give an example of, say, I was hammering something and I I hit my finger really hard and it was super painful and my nail has broken off. And so what my body goes in, you know, like I said, through the immune system and through a lot of different things, but basically it goes to the code where that the coding of for a nail is found in my body and that those big ribosomes will come out and be like, Hey, you, this, you piece of DNA open up. Because I got to craft a new nail. She she busted up her nail before. I got to make a new nail. I need you to open up so I can make, so I can have the, the building blocks to make a new nail. And so that the, those different, like I said, through the primers and whatnot, it'll cause that DNA to open up and I'll start coding for a brand new nail. Our souls are the same way. So say when a trauma uh, say a death in the family, like I said, especially a death that's unexpected, uh, say an amazing opportunity that you've worked really, really hard for, um, falls into your lap, say, uh, a whole bunch of, of financial blessings came your way that, that were totally unexpected or that were, you were praying for it and were really needing, uh, say correction. Uh, correction and feeling judgment has so, you know, you know, per se fallen on you. Your soul goes back to that part of your soul DNA to write the code of what's your thoughts, what you're meditating on. That's coming from that code that's in, that's coming from your soul DNA. The words that are coming out of your mouth, how you're feeling, that's coming out of your soul DNA, how you're responding to the situation. Uh, you may not say the words, but again, it's the meditation of your heart. It's your thoughts. It's uh, what you're, again, what you're feeling. That's written in your soul DNA, which is why it's so vitally important 
to switch that out. And how is that done? Through the reading of the word, through the, like I said, what does scripture say? Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Meditate on this word day and night, night and day. Have this word be like a stone upon my neck, tied around my neck. You know, uh, let, you know, let my, let my heart not forget the temple of my God, putting God first in everything, changing out not only just your lifestyle, not only just your habits, but changing out your thoughts, changing out how your feelings. What? I can determine how I feel. I can determine I have say, because a lot of times we like to think that how we feel uh, it is dictated by, like, it's just an automatic response. Like, uh, like it's like a pain response, but it's not that soul coded DNA. That's our thoughts, the meditations of our heart, what's written on our soul DNA. That's what's determining how we feel. So say someone is rude and nasty to us, uh, is your first response to protect, to guard, to defend, or is it to turn the other cheek? Is it to stop, have situ situational awareness and see what's actually going on here? Or hey, to be so transformed that to be like Jesus, I see into the heart and intent of man and I know exactly what's going on. Jesus did that all the time. And he did that as the son of man. Think about that. His soul DNA was so transformed, was so, because what did Jesus do? Jesus constantly prayed. He prayed all the time. We only have certain glimpses of scripture of what Jesus's prayers were. We only know towards the very end of the gospels where the apostles were like, okay, you're praying all the time. Um, how do you pray? How do you talk to God if you truly are his son uh, and you like came from heaven where we are going? Uh, how, how, how did that come about? Like how, how, you're praying a lot. Think about that. Jesus Christ, who was on the planet, prayed more than probably all the apostles combined. Hence why I think they picked up on it and was like, um, so Jesus, how do you pray? Because, or how, how should we pray? Because you pray a lot. Think about that. Jesus was praying. He was always leaving the crowd, leaving them and having that communion with God. Why? That's that constant rewriting and converting of that soul DNA. Because he was still stuck in the flesh. Remember scripture says he suffered everything that we suffer. Everything. Think about that. There is not a thing, a situation, a hurt feeling. There is nothing that any human being can go through that Jesus Christ did not experience. Including death, including a whole host of things that individuals can go their whole lives without experiencing. He experienced it all. He had to. Because he had to prove that his blood would work in every situation. Think about that. Because we know that the also the encoding or the phenotype of the soul is also in the blood. So think about that. Think about that even in the terms of epigenetics. Jesus Christ had to experience everything because he had to master all that soul coding, all of that soul DNA so that it could be for us. So to show, to show God and to show Satan and to show the whole, to show all of humanity that it could be done and that it was possible. And even think about it, think about the prophet. You know, we, again, I always kind of joke around with people, unless there is a chariot of fire coming for you with your name on it, that's coming for you, training doesn't stop. Now we can see why. It's our soul DNA that has to be 
not that has, you know, the, the, the building blocks of our DNA literally have to be switched out because why, like we've seen in that video, our, that soul DNA, it's just copying what's already there. So we have to change out what's there. Think about all the DNA that composes our body. That's only a type and shadow of all the recoding that has to be done. All the DNA in our soul that has to be recoded. That's a lot of work. That is a whole lot of work that we have ahead of us. So think about how amazing, how amazing the prophet was that his soul was so converted, his literal uh, coding, the, the genes of his soul were so transformed that they matched his spirit, that literally the genetic coding, the DNA coding of his spirit totally matched the DNA coding of his soul. Express, again, phenotypes, just the expression of that to his body. It was so on point that it was like, yeah, you know, we're just going to switch out this physical form because that actually no matter how much transfiguration that actually won't survive in heaven, that won't survive the trip. But uh, yeah, your spirit and soul are so adequately recoded that yeah, you're going to fit into heaven. Think about that. That's how converted, that's how much his spirit and soul were rewritten. The DNA of his soul was rewritten so that to such a to such a level, such a degree, that it was compatible with eternity. Guys, we got a long way to go. And even like again, just to to two to kind of reiterate, to kind of talk through. So and it talked about the direction and that that recoding, um, or like I said, that making of new soul DNA can only happen in that one particular direction. Um, and that's based on the primers. And so I'm like, those primers, those soul defenses, those soul triggers, those soul thoughts, those are the things, like I said, that'll trigger the copying of that soul DNA. But you notice those were marked by, uh, by numbers. Those were marked by prime, prime three, prime five, you know, prime five, prime three, and how it copies in different ways and that in those two different directions. This is why, too, with the DN with the soul DNA, you can go backwards. And what's being copied is what's in your past. So think about that. Because that direction, so the numbers determine the direction. But the letters determine what actually gets copied. The words, think about that. The words determine what's actually being copied. The numbers determine the direction. So think about that for your soul. Are you coding? Are, your, are you soul coding for your future? The future that you have in God? So in essence, are you coding for eternity's DNA? for what's eternal, for what will pre-exist and has always existed for you? Or are you coding, is the direction of your coding from your past? Are you coding that soul DNA from when you were five? Are you coding that soul DNA from when you were eight and you're 10? Are you, think about that. Think about the different times in your life uh, that that formed who you are, good and bad. It could be, you know, that year that you won a spelling bee and you had this, you had built up all this confidence and you were like, yeah, I'm smart. I'm a genius. This is my thing. This is what I do. And from that point forward, your soul coded that DNA for confidence and strength and fortitude for that area. For me, that was the sciences. I had, I knew a specific times in my childhood and in my growing up that I was like, science is my thing. This is what I'm good at. 
So not only did it transform my mind, but when it came to those topics, I wasn't afraid. I didn't doubt myself. Was it challenging? Yeah, when challenge came, because that had already been written in my soul, when it got challenging, what did I do? I just tried harder. I just put more effort into it. Why? Because it was already written in my soul that that was my thing. Think about that. Think about that in the terms of the dunamite. That's where we need to get. Two, and the fact that, you know, we remember things out from our childhood, we remember things even as young adults that affected us, that affected our relationships, maybe affected how we respond to the opposite sex. Maybe it was a boyfriend that was abusive, someone that you had no business being with, but yet those experiences, those words, those feelings, those emotions, those thoughts wrote on your soul. It wrote on your soul DNA. You're fine now. I mean, you don't, that person's long gone. You've moved on, da, 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 da. But have you, have you moved on? Because did you switch out that soul DNA or did you just get past it? Seemingly past it. Because how many relationships have you been through? Ooh, <laughs> Think about it. Even to uh, say um, different situations, you know, say you had you had a, a favorite uncle or your mom and dad, um, you would watch them that in times when they were stressed uh, or to unwind, they would have a drink or say um, as just a, you know, they look so cool when they smoked or, you know, different things like that. Again, remember words, thoughts intense how that makes that impression on you that wrote on your soul dna that that was dna that wrote on your soul so when as you got older either when you were stressed when you wanted to relax what what whatever your soul goes back to write that code just like your body does again just like if you were to bang up your finger your body is smart. It goes back to, hey, okay, oh, that piece of DNA, that piece of DNA right there codes for a fingernail. Open up. Let's copy that because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It looks good. Let's copy that strain of DNA and start making a new fingernail because we got to replace this. The very same thing happens in your soul. When you get hurt, when you get hit, uh, it could be your finances to physically being hurt. It's not just what gets written on the outside, on your outs, you know, your bodily DNA. It's also what gets replicated for what's written on your soul. All right. Good stuff, right? So that's why, you know, we have to be transformed. And two, that's why the drills are so important. Oh, here we go. So here is just a picture of uh, what a chromosome is. Now, a chromosome you can think of is, is two alleles. Remember we talked about last time, it's just two alleles. So I have, so I've got one strand that's got just all super twisted up of DNA. And I've got another one that's super twisted up of DNA and they just like connect in the middle and they make an X. So if you think about it, a chromosome is just a two alleles, two groupings of DNA that are put together. And again, we know that half of that comes from our ma is a combination there of uh, dominant and recessive genes that come from our mom and come from our dad. This too is what affects our soul. So let's look at this here. So here we see it is a combination of the seed of man and the seed of Christ. Because again, so again, how does our soul make up? It, it gets the impression. It gets the influence. It gets the push from the spirit, which God has bestowed upon us. And it gets the push, the, the effect, the, the sensations, the signals from the body as well. And it is the soul that makes up the determination of the expression 
It's what's written on your soul. What is decided to be written on your soul that decides that, again, that phenotype, that expression of what comes out in your mouth, in your thoughts, in your heart. Again, even what gets expressed in your body. Because what do we know? Scripture says uh, bitterness is as rotting to the bones. So it may not even be something you you talk about. It may not even be, you know, be something you just keep to yourself. But that soul writing, that soul DNA writing gets expressed in your body. There's no hiding it. So here again, we talked about dominant genes and recessive genes and why it's a process of switching out those building blocks, switching out those bases from the due to, uh, you know, from the from man's DNA, from even the combination of DNA, soul DNA from my mom, my dad, my experiences, whatnot, even everything that gets absorbed via epigenetics to that normalizing gene, that pure genetic soul expression of Jesus Christ. Now, remember, we talked about, you know, the combination of genes, like if I have a recessive gene coming from a recessive gene, well, it's whatever is the combination of the two that ends up happening. If I have a dominant gene versus a recessive gene, well, it's the dominant gene that gets expressed over that. And that's why, too, with the expression of sin, the expression of sin in our souls, it depends, too, whether it is a dominant gene or whether it's a recessive gene. Because if it's a recessive gene, again, we're in the working out our faith with fear and trembling. It starts to downgrade into a recessive gene to where our God DNA starts to be the dominant DNA in our souls to where it eventually that recessive gene gets copied out. Because remember, it's the dominant gene that will, that should be, that'll, it's the recessive gene that will fade away and the dominant gene will be the one that wins out when it starts to be copied. That's why it's a process as well. Because sometimes even, like I said, when it talks about that mutant gene, sometimes there's no expression. And when there's no expression, that's in the process of when your God DNA is starting to become dominant. But when there's it, there's enough there for a mutation, that's when you start getting that mutated sin DNA copied in your soul. All right. So two, just again, I'm going to go through this. Uh, so what are some of those ways um, that mutations can, so we talked about like the things that can cause uh, changes or mutations in the genes of our souls. What are, how does that sometimes come about? And again, depending on what is dominant and recessive or what are the, you know, again, remember even scripture talks about if you're lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Those are those situations where you have two recessive genes. And it's just whatever the combo is at that time that wins out. Those are the places in your life that you're inconsistent. That is the indication. And that is what's written on your soul are all those times you're inconsistent. All those times you break your word to yourself, to God, to others. That's a point in your soul where two recess recessive genes are a mixed bag. That's what it looks like in your soul and how it, it appears, the phenotype in your life. Okay. So we're talking about um, inherit mutations. This can be uh, gen uh, genealogical or uh, generational uh, curses or royal line of blessing. So again, this goes into, uh, this could be say, uh, you have a bunch of athletes in your family, uh, say uh, baseball or football. Uh, you just have just a bunch of athletes in your family to where based on whatever the combination of those genes are, um, you, you just, you have the, those building blocks that are there. Um, and it can be like, say, you know, they go into different sports, but that genetic makeup is there. Uh, that that's just a kind of a physical everyday example of what that looks like. So again, 
talking about the DNA of the soul, this could be uh, this could be a common uh, hindrance that is a curse, a genetic curse, uh, a, a generational curse. Why? Because it it's encoded. It's that soul DNA that's getting copied over and over again in your soul. And nothing is going back in to replace those words, thoughts, imaginations, all of them. Nothing's going in to replace the actual composition of that soul DNA. So it just is continually copied. This could be uh, drug addiction. This can be alcoholism. This could be just being abusive. Say, you know, I was like, well, my mama was mean and I'm mean. That's soul DNA coding. Well, uh, you know, it can be like, well, no one, you know, you just, you have this uh, soul makeup, this soul DNA makeup of you don't take nothing from nobody because it was your cousin or your aunt that always was telling people off. That is a soul gene that is just continually replicating even through you, down through your line to others that is being expressed, again, thoughts, wills, emotions, meditations, the words coming out of your mouth. It all leads back to that. All right, guys. So we are actually going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. I hope you have uh, continued to enjoy this. We got one more week. We got one more Sunday. So we'll continue to finish this out. All right. Hallelujah. God, I praise you. I praise you and I bless you for our amazing congregation. God, I thank you that you are restoring, reviving and revitalizing. Yes, God, the DNA, the God DNA, the divine DNA that you have placed with inside them now in Jesus name. Lord, I thank you that you are healing the brokenhearted, that you are mending up their souls. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would go in like only you can heal up the broken dreams heal up the broken hearts heal up that that cursed dna god in their souls god replace it with your love your joy your peace your rejuvenation your fire god for your word for your spirit for your worship for your very presence god for your knowledge your truth your wisdom jesus i ask even now Holy Spirit, that you go in and heal, go in and restore, go in and make alive, go in God and, and fix and repair the, what was written on their souls, God, things that they did and God, things that they didn't even have a clue about Jesus, God, things that happened to them. And then in response that they fulfilled that were, were self-fulfilling prophecies, self-sabotage on their own lives. God, I'm asking even now you go in Jesus, Lord, I am agreeing with these mighty men and women of God, go in and heal and restore and revitalize. Jesus. Yes, God, the same resurrection life that brought Jesus Christ alive and back from the dead. I'm asking that you engraft into the encoding of their hearts, their minds, their thoughts, the intents, God, their words. Yes, God, their very spirits. I'm asking now in Jesus' name that the dominant DNA, both physically, solely, and spiritually, God, be of you and be of your eternity and be of your blood. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, guys, you have a wonderful, blessed day 